God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And my microphone's off again. Good morning. <laughs> it's off. Good morning. Here we go. All right. <laughs> For a minute, at least. Nice to stand. And we're going to sing the chorus to how great thou art to start our service out today. out with a better song to you. You may be seated. Well, okay. There is a lot of stuff in our bulletin today. You need to read it and put it on your fridge because we have so much to do. But the first thing I'd like to do is remind our people who are uh, listening to us online, if they have a prayer request, please go ahead and put it in the, I'm off again, um, Please. There's another one. Um, forgot where I lost. Where I was. Put your co comment section on so that we can get it. Otherwise, uh, we may not get your prayer request in time. Tomorrow night is trunk or treat. Um, come park out here on the on the parking lot. Mike will be out there to kind of tell you where to park and everything. Uh, if you're going to be giving out treats, you should probably come about 5.30, quarter six at the latest. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of kids coming because we usually do. So we'll, we'll look for that, okay? Um, Don't be scared about the forecast because it's not going to rain. All right. Mike is our forecaster, so we'll, we'll listen to him, okay? Um, Operation Chick Christmas Child is growing. We have uh, almost a whole pew full of, of boxes over here, but that's not enough. Mike's goal this year is what, Mike? Fifty. You want? Whoops. Mike, did you have anything else you want to say about Christmas Child? About. Okay. Also remember your blessing bags. We're going to change the, the turn-in date to November the 27th. There was a conflict for the week before, so we're going to have it on November the 27th. That just gives you another day to share your blessings, or another week to share your blessings. So be sure and put that on your calendar. Um, grief share is on Thursday, and Tuesday and Thursday, right? Just Thursday? Okay, my mistake. On Thursday, uh, how many of you saw the pastor on TV this week? Yeah, he did a pretty good job. I was pretty proud of him, you know. Uh, and because of that, Pastor, you want to talk about it for a second? Put John the call there. Well, maybe. You want this one? No, I was Clips in my hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and do it this up and then I won't have to do it later. That's true. Maybe. All right, how about now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, grief share is uh, still going on. You, you do not have to have come for like the first meeting or the first two meetings or whatever to, uh, to attend the meeting. You can come to any one of them. This is for. Anyone who's dealing with uh, the, uh, the death of a 
loved one or a friend, uh, no matter if that is uh, you know, something in the last few months or something 20, 30 years ago. There's still grief associated that, that you feel like you need to process. We want that to be a safe place to come and find hope and find healing. And uh, so that's, we, have it, we hold it down in Jarrett just for the ease of having tables in the back of the sanctuary along with the screen that we can put things on all right there together. And uh, so that is at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, there's no cost. Uh, there's the video and, and the group discussion while we're there. And then some short exercises in a work two, two or three questions in a scripture to look at uh, each day. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, but there's some powerful things there. So uh, if that's something you're dealing with, we hope you'll come. Thank you. And you did do a really good job. Thanks. <laughs> um, Okay, if you notice, we have two collecting items in the front down here. One is our undies Sundays. This will probably be the last Sunday for it. It should go down to Heart and Hand this week. Um, but those are the things that were collected for Heart and Hand to give out to the people down there uh, who need it. Now, they don't, they don't charge them for any of this. Anything like this that we turn in, they don't charge them. They give them to the people. So they're very, very good uh, about that. Also, you'll see the other basket over there, and um, it's got food on it. And if you'll notice in your bulletin, there's some, some information about uh, the month of November. The UMW is collecting food. Uh, we're helping out Jarrett with their Christmas um, baskets and things, and so they've asked us to help with, the, with canned goods. And there's a list in the bulletin of things that they really do need the most. Uh, their game down there that they're playing is that every Sunday you come to church, you bring two cans of food. Um, and that will really help to fill those boxes. They have 17 families, I think. Well, anyhow, it's... Yeah, they're doing family units, but like Heather just said, there's 30 individuals. So it takes a lot of food, a lot of food. So help them out, okay? These specifically are items they need and laundry detergent, if anybody can help with that. Specifically, okay. All right. Um, follow your, your bulletin. Keep, keep up with it because we're just we're really, really busy. Um, Mike, are you ready for children's, or children's time? <laughs> Are you being an instructor today? I'm glad to see Liam back there. I would say before Mike comes up, the newsletters are in your basket over by the door of the file, so check it out before you leave. I'm sorry. That's okay. Tell a lot more about the commission. Good morning. Sunshiny day. It should be vibrant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's better. Okay, gotta make sure my remote's up here for my time here. So I know we have a Girl Scout here. But Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, they have a two-word motto. You're not allowed to answer. <laughs> Who can tell me what it is? Well, go ahead. Just yell it out. Be prepared. Oh, I love them. We used to, there's, uh, I can't remember, there's a, is it a Disney character that some bear would go, be prepared, be prepared. Is that right? Is that a Disney? It's like a knockoff to Little Red Riding Hood show. Oh, okay. I just remember that. That, that sticks in my head here. But, you know, we, we got to be prepared for things. You know, as as we're coming up to, man, November is going to be here Tuesday. So we're getting into pretty soon. I'm going to be gone the next two weeks, and shortly after that, it's going to be Advent, where we're getting prepared and ready for Christmas. You know, I really think some of the stores, I think they start preparing for Christmas in June. And when you look at some of their shelves and what they're selling, but... You know, we have to put up our tree, the lights, the decorations. we got to get prepared for buying gifts. You know, I know, guys, we wait till the last week. But, you know, a lot of people do get prepared and buy their gifts early. Uh, send out their Christmas cards. 
the part I love the most. Got to be prepared for for the season by baking cookies and candy. I may love that. Oh, I love that. You know, but while we're preparing for Christmas, you know, we really need need to be prepared for Jesus' return. I want to uh, talk about uh, Matthew 24, verse 42. Did it come on? Yeah. <laughs> I, love it when it, I love it when it works. But it, it states, So you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. You know, if we don't know the day that the Lord's coming back, how are we supposed to be prepared for it? Any ideas? Yes. Um, if you don't know when he's going to come back, you look in the Bible? Well, even the Bible doesn't tell us when he's coming back. No one knows when he's coming back. Yes. Yep, you can pray. That's one thing to, to pray, ask God for, for prayer. But one easy way to be prepared is to do what God wants us to do. He wants us to pray. He wants us to love one another and love Him, love our neighbors. You know, it's very fun and exciting to get prepared for Christmas, especially when you're wrapping the presents around the tree and everything. But most importantly, we need to make sure that we are prepared when the Lord Jesus returns for us. So let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Help us, Lord, to be prepared for the day that you return for us. And have us tell everyone about you too, so they can return with you as well. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Heather, you might want to cover your ear. Because you got them both right there. One, two, three. I did forget about is November 1st is our um, All Saints Observance Day. Uh, we'll be preparing a special bulletin. If you have something about someone that you want to uh, tell us about that has passed on, send that information to Loretta. Um, Pastor, can you explain this a little bit better? I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now. Sorry. <laughs> We just we just need to put a third chair out here, so I'm not playing piano. I'm just yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, All Saints Sunday. How many of you were here last year when we did this? Okay, a number. Um, how many of you? This is a brand new thing. A few of you. Okay, a few of you. Um, what we do on All Saints Day is we, we remember those who have been in our lives somewhere along the way, but who have who have passed away, who have who have gone on ahead of us. And it's a reminder to us that, that the church here and the church in eternity is still one church. We are all one body of Christ. We're still at least connected that way, even if we're separated uh, by death. And so it, it's a good way to remember those people and what they've done in our lives. It's a good time to remember the hope of Christ for eternity. And so then the service usually centers around, uh, of course, the remembrance of, of our loved ones, but also... Our eternal hope. And it's really, it sounds like it would be really more, but it's actually a really beautiful, uh, hopeful service. And uh, I thought it went really well last year. So it I'm did. Excited it did. Again. Thank you. Those things are being sent to Loretta about Thursday. For right. Loretta needs that information by Thursday. If you don't text, you might call her and talk with her and see how is the best way to get the information to her. <coughs> Okay, let's stand and we're going to do our hymn of praise, which is General Shepherd, and I think we all know this one.
you going to do a prayer? No. Hey, we need the choir to come up now, please. Why are we going to do the chorus first? Okay, the chorus is first. Should we get a lamp? Okay, got her up here. You can share. Okay, we're ready. Pardon? Yes.
Good morning. Get over to my scripture. It was. It was a great job. I hope we can do that every week. You all can do it every week. That's the. <laughs> you know, there's a. Before I get into the scripture, there's an old saying that goes, "Time flies when you're having fun." Now, isn't that true? Well, today is the last Sunday in October. Also, it's the last Sunday of Pastor Appreciation. And I want to thank Pastor Robert for his caring, his kindness, and his willingness. You are such a, such a wonderful, wonderful pastor. Pastor, laboring lovingly, studying diligently, giving selfishly, persevering patiently, feeding the sheep faithfully, pressing toward the mark, not only for your family, but for all of ours. And for that, we thank you. We so appreciate you, Pastor Robert. And tying right in with the ending of Pastor Appreciation, I'm reading from Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and from our brother, brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, is that right? Colossae. Colossae. <laughs> Who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We, are always, we always pray for you, and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for all of God's people, which come for your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. Lord, will the ushers please come forward? beautiful day. Lord, be with Robert as he brings our message to us today. Bless this also in the that we're about to receive to build your church. We ask this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and sing, take the name of Jesus with you. <laughs>
Good morning. Good to uh, good to see all of you. Is this is? Uh, yeah. Um, Mike, let me ask you a question. If I pop this necklace off and pull that microphone up a little bit, will it? If we will that let us turn it down a little? Yeah. Let me just do that. It's probably going to be the easiest. It's going to sound silly to say I have to take my glasses off to take the necklace off, but it won't fit off. Won't fit over my head unless I do that. So. <laughs> Let's try. That's probably a little easier. Is that better? Still. Not whistling quite as much. A Maybe a little. Hello. It's good. <laughs> One, two. All right. Well, we'll take prayer requests and and we'll we'll get her dialed in there. Um, let me share with you the ones we already have, and then uh, we'll fill in uh, fill in any others. So we have our foster families, which we have had on here for quite a while. We still want to remember them. Uh, my grandmother has really had no change, except that she is now beginning to be a little more confused. So do please pray for her. Um, it's been five, almost six months in the uh, rehab center there. Um, Heather's mom this coming week has her sixth chemo treatment, and uh, she'll be about halfway through the chemo with that. So, still tolerating it pretty well, starting to see some side effects, but she's she's hanging in there. Uh, we want to remember Angela Gay Kincaid, that is uh, the pastor's name at Elizabeth Memorial in Charleston. Uh, she is currently in Texas, undergoing uh, she's, she's part of a clinical trial uh, for uh, cancer treatment. That it's a very aggressive form of cancer that she has. Um, doing well with it so far from what we understand, but we want to remember her. Also remember their church because they're having to navigate with their pastor halfway across the country and have been for several weeks and will be for a little while longer. Uh, dad is, uh, he's doing good. My dad is doing good. He, uh, he does have, they did find that second abdominal aortic aneurysm, and so he is going to be having surgery sometime in the next couple of weeks, probably. Uh, he has an appointment Tuesday where they should set the, the surgical date, but it will probably be in the first couple of weeks of November, so do remember Dad and uh, appreciate your patience with me when schedule might have to flip or change on some things. But we'll, uh, his, his prognosis is good. His, his uh, overall outlook is real good. Um, He's just ready to get through the operation. So. He's in good spirits. We saw him this weekend. Uh, still have uh, Loretta, your mom, and stepdad on here. We continue to pray for them. Uh, continue to pray for Grief Share. I know we talked about it a little bit, but just pray that that, that will continue to be a, a, a ministry that touches folks. I think it's doing a lot of good for a lot of folks already, and, and we hope that it will continue to, to do that. We had, yeah, we had new people after the news thing the other day, and uh, so five, I think, five or six uh, more between the two groups uh, than we had the week before. So that was exciting, and, uh, and I, I don't know if any of them will ever see this, but for the folks at WSAZ, thank you for having me, because it's made, uh, making a difference. Some of the people are not just our folks either. Yeah, we're seeing folks from either other churches or who don't have church affiliations right now. So we're hoping that we can be an outreach that way too. Um, have a, this gentleman named Larry Cottrell. That's a friend of of the Ratliffs who is in ICU this morning. He's still there. Still not doing well. Okay. Well, we will remember him. I got a call from Marge Jones this morning, and she asked me to share with all of you that they are taking Bob to a nursing home. Um, he's just he's fallen several times at home. She can't help him that much in in that situation and so he's at the hospital right now but they're going to be transferring him uh, to a nursing home so do remember bob as he goes remember marge too because she's having a tough time of course uh, but that was do what we don't know don't know but i know that at least for now that's that's the situation um of course the trunk or treat is tomorrow night uh, remember that, and come out and join us, even if you haven't told anybody you are. Come, decorate your car, bring candy, it'll be great. Um, we're planning, the, the church has about 200 bags of candy that they'll be that will be given out. We're hoping for at least that many kids and maybe more. We have it. We have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have 200 bags of candy. Yeah. Um, 
So come and bring candy and, and decorate your cars and wear costumes and have fun. It's going to be good. Um, and this is, uh, I have one for Lou Taylor. This is Elaine's daughter-in-law's mom. And uh, she is very sick. And so we want to remember her as well this morning. Uh, are there others? Gotcha. Sandy, you had. Tom, that you had on there for us. Mm -hmm. Tim had surgery and it had not spread, so they were able to remove it. And he's, his prognosis is real good, so just kind of a prayer of praise right there. And Tom is, he's almost up with chemotherapy. He's got this done, but they, they think they want to stretch it maybe a little more before they went and do surgery on him. Okay. We'll remember them both. Glad to hear that about Tim, though. Yeah, that's a blessing. He was worried. Understandably. I just remember Joe, he's under the weather, and um, mm -hmm. Lola is kind of under the weather as well. You got it. You said that's your grandson-in-law? Yes. Okay, gotcha. And we just had emergency surgery for, for another condition. Mm -hmm. so recovering. From, one right after yeah, one. so recovering from one and going right to another one. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep and him I in prayer. I continued prayer for my mother-in-law, who's Glenda Baker, who's Keep her covered, and you guys too. Thank you. Welcome. Tell you that there is so much truth in that, y'all. I I wouldn't get anything done if she wasn't helping. Believe me, this is uh, this is not even remotely close to being a, a one person thing. She is this is a team effort, and she contributes a lot. She contributes a lot that people don't see. Um, just for one instance, I'll just tell you, you guys would would not even imagine the number of hours that she puts in on just something like the newsletter. That's, I mean, even just those things. So, yeah. No, Heather is uh, very much a part of this. Uh, I have noticed a, a number of you who gave pastor appreciation cards wrote both of our names on them. I thought that was cool. So, she is, uh, I, I could not, um, I couldn't do a whole lot of what we do uh, if I didn't, didn't have good help. So, glad they appreciate you. I appreciate you too. <laughs> I do. My life would be significantly less happy if uh, if she wasn't in it. So we need to remember the RSV yeah. going around the hospitals are full. And yeah. Potential triple threat this year with RSV and flu and COVID. And, yeah. Do, do remember that. I don't know if, how many of you have seen that on the news, but RSV, respiratory kind of virus that, is, that particularly affects kids. Most of the time adults get it and we're, we are okay. We might need you know, medicine or whatever, but man, 
Uh, I know there were a couple of schools, school systems in the viewing area of WSAZ that were talking about it the other night, where they had to close school for a day or two because almost half the kids were out absent with an upper respiratory or something. It's just been spreading like wildfire. So, yeah, yeah, they did in Lincoln County, I think. And and it's like the younger they are, the harder it hits. Um, one of our well, and you guys remember. We prayed for Cindy Biondi for a while because they had the twins. Uh, she's the pastor at St. Mark's. And they've all been at the doctor, kids and adults alike this week with it. And one of the twins was in the hospital for a day and a half with the RSV. She's home. She's doing a lot better. But it's, uh, it's hitting hard. So we do want to... RSV is not new. It's respiratory syndrome. Yeah. It's where we've been masked. Mm. And there is a uh, virus that is I knew it had been around a while. I didn't know that there was a shot or that it was that limited. Yes, but. it is very, very limited. The most, only the most at-risk babies mm. uh, get it. Well, um, I'm a retired respiratory. I was going to say, you would know. Yeah. 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 But it is. It's like a super cold right. adult. So most of us do. <laughs> but we, it is going around. We do want to. You know, pray, pray especially for the kids in the schools that it doesn't doesn't mow through them like that. Remember our hand washing, I mean hand washing, sanitizing, yeah. and, and wearing our masks that you know when when we are in the hospital. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, we definitely will will pray for that whole thing. For sure. Also, along with that, keep Asia in your prayers. Um, he's a, fr- a friend of mine. Um, it's her son. He has San Filippo, which is basically like juvenile um, Alzheimer's. But um, he is actually in the hospital right now. I think he was on a respirator um, from what would just be a simple cold for us. But it's very deadly to him. So just keep that whole family in prayer. Yeah. He's how old? I think he's nine, nine. and he has already lived longer than he should yeah. for the disease. Yeah, it's extremely rare. But we'll keep Aiden on our list too. Anyone else this morning? Pastor, there is a, a baby, uh, just a few months old, a uh, friend of mine from up here uh, in Pike County, where I live. And she's in the hospital fighting for her life. The baby is from this artist. Are there others? All right, well, let's pause for a moment of prayer. I'll get up. Lord, as we come this morning, we pray that you would be with us today. Lord, we're thankful for your presence already here. And uh, Lord, it's, it's a good day. It always is when we come into your house and we can remember your goodness and celebrate your kindness to us and that you are the the shepherd that leads us and you are the one that sends the Holy Spirit to us when we're in services. And, and when we're, we're two or three are gathered, Lord, you're in the midst. Your spirit is present that we can carry your name with us all the time. Lord, it's, it's a good place to be already today to celebrate and remember those things. But Lord, we also know that you're the God who cares about us. You care about the needs that we bring and, and that they are important to you no matter what they are or how many of them we have. And so Lord, we do come with our request this morning. We lift these foster families up to you and ask that you would continue to be with them and to meet the needs that they have this morning. Lord, some of the ones that are presenting a little more and, and others that have been there for a while, we lift these families to you. Lord, we lift my grandmother to you this morning and ask that you would be with her as she's in the rehab center there. And Lord, we know she's getting a little more confused. Lord, we ask for a touch from your healing grace and also of your presence to just surround her today there. Lord, for Heather's mom as she is heading into the, the about the halfway mark of her chemotherapy, Lord, we pray that she would continue to have mild side effects and Lord, that the, uh, this, the chemo would be effective at preventing the return of this cancer that she was fighting. 
Well, for Angela Gay Kincaid, we think of her as she is in Texas today, and and uh, I know she's been bouncing back and forth between Texas and, and where she's staying in Wichita, Kansas. Well, we pray you keep her safe as she travels back and forth all this time, and and Lord, that the, this clinical trial that she's in would be effective against the cancer that she has. Lord, we pray you cover her with your healing power. Also, that you would touch Elizabeth Memorial Church as they are uh, working without their pastor there and kind of a rotating slate of speakers and and uh, having to chart that territory for, for months at a time. Lord, continue to touch them and guide them be with them today. Lord, for Dad, we pray that you'd be with him in this upcoming surgery. We know we'll find out what day this coming week, but... Well, we're, we're thankful for his good spirits. We're thankful that his prognosis is good. Well, we pray that as the surgery happens, that it would be done smoothly and that all would go well and uh, that he would recover quick and that this would not be a, a problem that continues to linger. Well, for Loretta's mom and stepdad, we know they've had a lot of, of health struggles and things here lately and would they need a touch from your hand. So we lift them both to you today as well and ask that you would bless them, that you'd cover them with your healing grace and that you would surround them with your spirit and with your strength today. Lord, for the Grief Share ministry, we're, we're excited for being able to get this off the ground and excited that it is going to be able to help a lot of people. And Lord, we're thankful for new faces this week there. I ask that you continue to bless that, Lord, that it would be a safe spot for people to come to, to process and to vent and to pray and to find hope in the scripture and hope in each other's experiences. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to cover that group with your hand and bless it and bless everyone who comes out. Lord, for Larry Cottrell in the ICU this morning, we know he is uh, facing a, a pretty, pretty tough road, pretty tough day today. And so Lord, we ask that you would be with him and uh, in all that he is facing, Lord, that you cover him with your healing power and that you would be very present with him today. Lord, for Bob, uh, as, we, as we know he's headed toward the nursing home, we know that's not what he hoped, that's not what was in his plans or Marge's either. Lord, we ask that you would give him your peace and that you'd cover him with your healing power also and uh, walk with him through the coming days and weeks of this adjustment. And Lord, for Marge as well, we pray the same, that you would encourage her, that you'd be present with her, that you'd give her peace in this, and uh, Lord, that you would just walk closely with both of them. Well, for our trunk or treat tomorrow night, we know this will be a, a fun time and a good time, but we pray that this would be a, a time of outreach into the community too, that maybe somebody comes by who has never been here or who doesn't have a church home and that they might be inspired to come back and spend some time and, and uh, be in your presence and hear your word. And, and Lord, that you would do the reaching, that you would do the drawing for the folks that, that would come. Lord, for Lou Taylor, we lift, uh, lift her to you today, and we know she is very sick. Lord, I don't know all of the details of that, but we know that you do. And we ask for your healing power to surround her today as well, right where she is, that you would lift her up and, and restore her and make her whole. Lord, for Kathy Elkins, we pray for her and for her family as she's heading down to travel and, uh, and to be with them. But Lord, also for her uh, brother and sister down there, that you would touch them as well. You would surround them with your healing power. Lord, we know we ask for this a lot, but we know it does not run dry. And so, Lord, we lift them to you. Lord, surround them with your grace and your comfort and your power and your healing today. Lord, for uh, Tim and Tom, we've, we've lifted them together a, a lot. Lord, we're thankful for, for Tom's uh, surgical outcome and that the surgery had, or the uh, cancer had not spread anywhere. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with him and help that not to be the case. And for, uh, for Tom, who is looking at an extension of maybe his chemo before the surgery, Lord, we pray that that would continue to be effective so that when they do the surgery, they'll be able to get all of the cancer and, and that his prognosis would be good also. Lord, for Joey and for Lola, both of them feeling under the weather today, we ask that you would be with them as well. Lord, comfort them, grant them your healing today, and, and uh, lift them up. Give them some relief from the sickness and from the discomfort and just generally feeling crummy. Lord, we pray that you would bless them today and touch them. Lord, for Jean's grandson-in-law with the shoulder surgery coming up, we ask that you would be present in that surgery. Lord, that you would prepare everything so that that surgery would go well and go smoothly and that it would be done to perfection. Lord, that there would be a, an easy recovery and that it would do everything that it is supposed to do. Lord, be present there and move in your power, we pray. Lord, for Linda Baker, we pray for her. She is uh, recovering from a stroke and a fall. We know she's, she's living now with Darlene and her husband. And 
And Lord, we ask that you would be with Glenda and that you would uh, continue to touch her with your healing power also. Or that you would restore whatever may have been lost in the stroke and, and that you would be with that whole family as they're adjusting to, to life together. Or for the RSV cases, we've seen a ton of these all around and we've had several lifted specifically and Lord, we think also of Elaine's friend's baby who's dealing with this. But for, for the whole... Uh, the whole situation of it. Lord, we pray that it would slow down, that it would uh, not be running like wildfire through the schools, and Lord, that the kids that get it would recover quick and not have too terrible a time. We pray that you would place your hand over all of them, especially our school kids, Lord, for, for sickness and for all sorts of things, for safety and protection. And, and Lord, touch the teachers as well. Bless all of them uh, doing a hard work, but an important and a good work. Lord, touch all of them today. Lord, for Aiden with the San Filippo, Lord, we know this is such a serious thing. We ask that you would touch him as well, Lord. I, I don't, I'm not even sure I know totally how to pray for the need. But Lord, we know you know every inch of him and you know every in and out of this. So we pray that you would touch Aiden, Lord, that you'd cover him with your healing power and that you would restore him as well. Lord, for the unspokens, I know there were a couple lifted and that there are plenty on our hearts as well, Lord, we ask that you'd be in every single one of those situations and that you'd move as you see fit. Lord, now bless us as we head into the rest of the service. Be with me as I preach, Lord, that my words would not be mine, but they would be yours, and that you would be glorified and lifted up. Lord, remind us and encourage us today in the word of how good you are and, and how much you love us. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Well, if you have a Bible with you, I would uh, ask you to turn over to Luke chapter 19. It's going to be a very familiar story, Luke chapter 19. I think I unplugged the light with my foot. There we are. I opened my eyes for a second during the prayer and the light wasn't there, and I figured that was probably what happened. Luke 19. This week we are revisiting another one of those all too familiar passages. And I, I say, or I guess the story. Uh, I say that because, you know, we all kind of know the story that we're going to land on in this passage. But it's, uh, it's one of those you've probably known since you were a kid. This is a very early taught story. It even has a little song that goes with it. You know, the basics of the story match up with a lot of other stories. Somebody is coming to see Jesus, and that somebody is perhaps not the type that you think should matter to Jesus. But he does matter anyway, and so then he meets Jesus and everything changes. Now there are a ton of stories that go that way. And if that were the end of the story, this would be a very short sermon. It's not, it's not a long sermon, don't get nervous. But... Because there's, there's more to it in that. There's a lot to think about in here, and so much of the story, excuse me, so much of the story hinges on the little details that are not really hidden. We just move past them as we're hitting the bigger subjects. So much of what's important in here hinges on these small details, because it includes not just who sees Jesus, but who Jesus sees. So important in here. Luke chapter 19. I'm going to begin at verse 1 and just know right when it starts, when it says, He entered Jericho. That's, that's Jesus we're talking about. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. And the scripture says this He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. And so he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. 
For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let's pray together. Lord, as we come this morning again, we open your word. We pray that you would illuminate it for us. Lord, that you would be the, the guiding force in this message. Lord, we pray that, that as we examine this, that you would remind us of your great love and care for us. And Lord, that even in our most lost, that you have come to seek and to save and to find. Bless us and keep us today, Lord. Encourage us. And may this message not be my words, Lord. May it be yours alone. And may you be glorified above all else. And we ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. So you remember the song, right? About Zacchaeus? The wee little man? I used to always, like, once I got old enough to, like, you know, understand that people talked in different places around the world, that I, I like to imagine Zacchaeus as a Scottish person because he was a wee little man. <laughs> it's the only accent I can do. But this wee little man turned out to be a really fascinating character because in just these first couple of verses, we actually learn a whole lot about him. Um, and it, it's not that the Bible says a ton, it's that because of what it says, we can fill in a lot of other things that we would know. Because it starts out, you know, there's a man named Zacchaeus, he's a chief tax collector, and he's rich. I mean, those seem like details that might be important, but that they don't say a whole lot, they actually do. Uh, he's the chief tax collector, which means he's not just the regular disliked tax collector, he is in charge of a bunch of the regular disliked tax collectors. So he's like the chief of sinners, kind of. I mean, he sort of is. And he's rich, which means he's taken money from people. Because this is tax collecting. Oh, tax collecting was not an honorable profession back then. Like, if you poke around on the IRS website or you call the IRS and you are trying to figure out what your taxes are, they will tell you what they are. And you can figure that out, you can calculate it, you can have a pretty good idea of what that might be because, I mean, it's just a straight up number. Now, we might not like what's in the tax code sometimes, but it is, it's all there. You can figure it out. Not so much in, back in these days because Rome is occupying this entire area of the world right now. Uh, this is part of the Roman Empire. And they have basically set themselves down in Israel and, and let Israel still have what was essentially a puppet king. That's what Herod was doing. They kind of had their own cultural ruler, but Rome was over top of all of this. So Rome demanded that you pay taxes to Caesar. And so tax collectors would go and levy the tax and then receive the tax. But here's the deal. Is they might take your taxes and inflate them by three or four or five or eight times and then come and demand that amount of money from you. And because a tax collector demanded it from you, you had to pay it. And they would shuffle that part back to Rome that belonged to Rome and keep everything else from the overhead. So when a tax collector got rich, it was because they were stealing other people's money, essentially. Did you know that? That's how Roman taxes worked. Rome got the part they were supposed to get, because if they didn't, they'd probably come and kill the tax collector. That's generally how that would go. But if Rome got their part, didn't, if you marked it up four or five or six times, then all that extra markup you just kept. Rome didn't care, and the people out here didn't really have a way to know. They knew that they were being cheated. They had that much figured out. So a rich tax collector meant somebody who was taking advantage of other people. He was gaining at other people's expense. And then he is not well thought of in his community, which is probably not a surprise right now. Is it? How many of you like the IRS? Okay. How old are you? Twelve. Have you ever paid taxes before? Yeah. You don't get to answer this question. You're twelve. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Generally, most people do not enjoy thinking about the IRS. They don't want to hang out with, you don't, you, when you think of places that you want to send a Christmas card, you might leave one for your mailman, you're probably not sending one to the IRS, right? That's kind of how this went into, I mean, this is not a new thing. People did not like tax collectors. This is not well thought of in his community, but more than that, the crowd calls him a sinner. 
And it's a really specific turn of language that's happening there. But you just have to know, this was not commonly done by like a whole crowd. Anytime you have an instance of that happening in the scripture, it's really important. It's there for a reason. Because this is the kind of thing that like the Pharisees would say to people, and the, the chief priests might say to people, but it was not something that people generally said to other people. And so for the whole crowd to be like, boy, he's a sinner. He must have been. He was serious stuff. We're really not painting a very happy picture of Zacchaeus right now, are we? It didn't start out very happy. So now you have to imagine this day, because this is Jericho. Now this is centuries after the events of the Exodus. So long after crumbling walls and marching in circles, Jericho has now been rebuilt, and it's a bustling city. It's a busy place. In fact, it was the hub for trade in things like balsam, which was really expensive back then. It still is, I think. Um, but that, this was a major hub for the trade of, of balsam in particular and several other things. So this is a busy place. It is a bustling city. You're in the middle of the desert, so it's probably hot. It is dry. Jesus is passing through. The crowd is pressing in all around him. Have you ever been pressed around a whole bunch of people on a hot day? Isn't it always better when you can get away from all the people you're pressing? Right, so this is uncomfortable. This is a busy, bustling crammed up scene that you've got happening on the street. Jesus is coming down, the crowd is pressing around, and I can just imagine Zacchaeus was probably hearing this commotion and decides he's going to check it out. Now a tax collector would have had some pulse on what was going on in the community, because they just would have. They encountered most of the community. So he probably heard of Jesus. I imagine he didn't know enough about him yet to decide whether or not he should follow him. But listen, this is key here, okay? He wanted to know who Jesus was. And we sing the little song, and we've sung it all our lives. And what does that line say? He climbed up in a sycamore tree, what? For the Lord he wanted to see. Right, for the Lord he wanted to see. And that gives us the idea that because we know he's a short guy, he's going to go up in the tree so he can visually get a bead on where Jesus is at. That's not the only thing going on here. Because it's in, I think it's in verse 3, it says he was seeking to see who Jesus was. It's a little different, isn't it? Like if you'd never, this is never going to happen. But if, if crowds were pressing around me and you had never seen me, and you climbed a tree, and you saw me from a distance, did you see who I was? Or did you just see what I look like? You see the difference? You can see somebody visually and not necessarily know who they are, like to know them in a deeper way. Zacchaeus is not just getting to where the tree is so that he can get some visual bead on what Jesus might look like. He wants to know who Jesus is. You see why that's so important? I mean, I think Zacchaeus probably wanted to know why these people are following. He probably wanted to know if these stories that he'd heard about healings and miracles, if those things were true. He, he probably wanted to know what it was about this guy, about this rabbi, because he'd surely dealt with other ones. What is it about this one that has made him different from all the others? And Zacchaeus probably may not have known everything there was to know. He sure didn't have all the answers, but he knew that Jesus was somebody that he needed to see. He needed to know who this was. But in our scripture passage and in the song, what did we talk about? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. He's small. He's a short guy. He can't see around the people that are in the way. Something is blocking his view. Now for him, that's very literal. But for us, man, what a metaphor. We might feel like things surround us and get in the way so we can't really see where Jesus is at or where he's going or maybe even all of who he is. But here's the deal is we can still take the lesson from Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus was going to let nothing get in the way of seeing the person he knew he needed to see. Jesus was coming. And so you can just imagine Jesus is coming up the road and he's like, so what do I do? Because all I see are people from the waist up. And Zacchaeus is probably... You know, he, Zacchaeus is Kilroy. So, oh, that's an old reference, I'm sorry. Um, so what's he going to do, though? He climbs 
a sycamore tree. Now you have to have the right picture of the sycamore tree. Because y'all, context is everything when we read this. Context is everything. So you have to have the right picture of the sycamore tree. Now we have some American sycamores around here. I mean, you don't have to go that far into the woods to run off and find one. They are around. They grow in this area of the world. It's not the same tree. A sycamore tree in the Middle East uh, tends to grow almost out as much as it grows up. They are very wide. They have very broad branches. They're really pretty. I mean, you should look them up and look at a picture of them. They're interesting. They, they would have had a lot of low-hanging branches. They would have been perfect for somebody to climb up. And this particular tree also bears a fruit that is called a sycamore fig. Um, a, this fruit is most of the time not a good fruit to eat. It is so bitter that it is almost impossible to eat them before they get very, very ripe. There's a very, very narrow window in which you can eat one of these fruits. And if it's at the right time, they're sweet, they're delicious, and they're good. But if it's before that, then they're way too bitter. And if it's after that, they're rotten. But the other problem is this, that the sycamore fig tree, because of where it grows and because of the fruit that it, it has, you almost can't eat it when it's ripe either because bees and other bugs in that area will lay eggs or put their insect larvae into the, the flesh of the fruit until they hatch. So it's like instant nutrition inside the, the fruit. And so they'll lay their eggs and things in there, which means... Most of the time, even if you find one at the right time, if you go to try to bite into it, you're going to come out with half a worm. It's true, though. You know, the only way to fix this, the only way to keep that from happening, was to pierce the fruit all the way through. You had to basically dig a tunnel through it or punch through it with like an awl kind of tool. Uh, it was, this is called wounding the fruit. If you did that, then it would ripen up faster. The bees didn't want to, the bees and the bugs did not want to put their larvae in there because it was open to the elements or open to other things that might eat those bugs. And so when you wounded the fruit, it would ripen up faster, it would stay ripe a little longer, and it was it would yield good fruit. So Zacchaeus sees one of those trees. But he sees it from a distance. Because it doesn't say he just turned around and climbed up the tree, he had to run over to the tree. He ran ahead of the crowd and ahead of Jesus to get up the tree. So he sees the tree at a distance. And Jesus is coming. So what to do? And you can almost see his mind working when you just read this little story. That he decides he really doesn't care what anyone thinks. He runs ahead and climbs the tree. And you say, well, why, why would that matter? What anybody thought about him climbing a tree? Well, because in that particular time of history, in that particular place... People of stature or of wealth or who had certain jobs or whatever were expected to behave in certain ways. We don't have that anymore, do we? Right. Well, they did. But their rules are going to sound a little funny to us, but you have to know what they are for this story to make all of the sense it needs to make. Did you know that if you were a person of stature, a person of wealth in that particular time in history, that yanking up the corners of your robe and running down the road was considered really, really undignified? It was. Like, if you were a respected person, you didn't do that. People looked down on you for that. Like, that was a huge, massive thing. Like, you might be ostracized from your friends for doing undignified type of things, including yanking up the edges of your robes and running. You know what else was pretty undignified, pretty disgraceful? Climbing a tree as an adult. Children climbed trees, but once you became an adult, you put that stuff away. You didn't do that unless you were up there working, picking fruit or whatever else. But otherwise, you didn't just go climb a tree. That was disgraceful. Now, obviously, the crowd would have known all of these rules. Jesus would have known all of these rules. Zacchaeus would have known all of these rules, but Zacchaeus didn't care. Because can you imagine this? I, I can almost see the desperation on his face when he gets out to the street and all he sees is the crowd. He knows Jesus is in the middle, but he can't, he can't see him. He can't get to him. And he's like, man, there are too many people. I cannot see. I need to see. What do I do? There's a, there's a tree over there. Maybe if, I, maybe if I can get up there, I mean, you can, just, you can see him just take off. 
he kind of figures this through and he's running and he hits those bottom branches of the tree in stride and bounces up three or four limbs and so he can get up there and see Jesus. He can get a view because this is Jesus and he sure didn't want to miss him. He didn't care for one second about all that undignified stuff. He needed to get to where he could see who Jesus was. So Jesus is making his way ultimately to Jerusalem. It's a long trip that Jesus is on. And he has to come through Jericho to do it, which is why we end up here. And we've just seen him teaching along the way and healing people. And Maybe some of that is what is filtered through that got Zacchaeus' attention. But we know that in just a few verses before this story, actually in verse 18, or in chapter 18, we see him talking to the rich young ruler. You guys know that story, I'm guessing. You know that one? talks to the rich young ruler. He's kept all the commandments, but he doesn't want to give up his stuff. And so he goes away sad, even though Jesus tells him that's what you have to do to enter the kingdom. But he didn't want to do that, so he, he went away. So now Jesus goes on from that scene and into Jericho. And this is the place where so many centuries before, the walls had fallen. And the city had since been rebuilt, but in the moment that I think only Jesus could orchestrate, a moment that only he could be in the center of, he glances up in the tree and sees the outcast, sinful little Lilliputian tax collector, and a whole different kind of wall is about to come down. As Jesus looks among the fruit of that sycamore fig tree and sees a whole different kind of piercing that is about to happen. It's not the fruit itself that is going to get pierced so that it is good. It is the heart of Zacchaeus. And he's cut to the quick by a simple command, come down here, because I've got to go to your house. I've got to go to where you are. And so it says he hurried down and he received him joyfully, which is awesome. I mean, this is an outcast, man. He's hated He's called a sinner, and he was a sinner. He had been so undignified in getting in that place to view Jesus, and then Jesus saw him. You see the pivot there? All of the rest of that passage leading up is about Zacchaeus trying to get to where he can see Jesus. Jesus saw him. Jesus already saw him. You know Jesus knew he'd be there that he knew what Zacchaeus needed. He saw Zacchaeus and said, I'm spending time with this guy. I don't care what his friends think. Because you see, for Jesus, you could be the lowest, most outcast, most hated person. Maybe the people around you don't even like you. Maybe you've messed up horribly and done awful things and stolen from people and whatever else. Jesus still sees you too. And he sees you with those eyes of love. And he'll walk up and very, probably very simply say, I need to dwell with you. I need to be at your place. I need to be where you are. And the walls come tumbling down. You know, at the end of this scene is after they've spent just a little bit of time together. Because we don't get a lot of details, which is interesting. Kind of leaves us to imagine just a little bit. Because we don't hear the conversation as Jesus and Zacchaeus walk back to Zacchaeus' house. We don't know how far that was. We don't know how long it took. We don't know what he served for dinner. We don't know how long he stayed. We can figure Jesus probably hung out, maybe stayed one night, and then moved on. But, you know, we don't have a lot of those details. But what we do have is that all it took was Jesus for being present, for this guy's entire life to turn around. All of a sudden, it's half of everything I'm giving to the poor. And anything I've defrauded, I'll pay back four times. First of all, you have to know half of everything does not mean half of the salary he gets. That literally means half of everything he possesses right now at this moment. Cut it in half, give all of that half to the poor. Just give it away. It's already, he's, everything he owns, 50%, right out the window to help. To give to people who need it. And then, he's not just giving back what he stole, he's restoring it and then adding to it. And this is not some ploy so that Zacchaeus might hope that Jesus sees his heart. Jesus already saw his heart, he pierced it in the fig tree. But now, the one that was pierced is the one that's bearing fruit. 
that suddenly what was so bitter, what wasn't good for anything, is now feeding someone else. The heart that was pierced is bearing fruit. And that outcastness, that career choice, that prior sin, none of that mattered from here. As Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Here's the thing, we've already talked a little about the rich young ruler. Zacchaeus and that, that rich young ruler have a lot in common. They both have means, they're both rich, they both wanted to see Jesus, but the rich young ruler came to Jesus because he wanted to have his position and his lifestyle justified. He came in and basically said, Lord, I've done all these things. I should be fine. And Jesus says, you still lack something. Essentially, he told him he had made money an idol. He had something between him and God. And he said, you still lack something. Get rid of this. And then you can have the kingdom. Because he's coming in trying to talk about how well he's done. Everything he has accomplished. Every, everything in his life before he met Jesus should be plenty of reason enough to get into the kingdom, right? Uh-huh. You know, we don't hear that anymore these days, do we? I'm a good person. Everything I've done in my life has been good. That should be enough, shouldn't it? But then... We see the rich young ruler go away sad because he doesn't want to do that last thing. He might have done all these other good things. He might have kept a bunch of commandments. But he doesn't want to get rid of the thing that stands between him and God. And so he goes away sad. Zacchaeus came to Jesus because he wanted to know who Jesus was. He didn't come to try to justify his own position. He wanted to know who Jesus was. And my friends, who he is changes because the ruler went away sad, but Zacchaeus received Jesus joyfully. The ruler didn't want to do that thing that led him into the kingdom, but Zacchaeus says to Jesus, or Jesus says to Zacchaeus, excuse me, salvation has come to this house. Not because of the money he was giving away. It has very little to do with the actual money, but it has everything to do with his heart. It's everything to do with what changed here. The ruler wanted to keep everything he already had. Zacchaeus saw everything he already had. He gave it away once he met Jesus because who he was before that was not who he was after that. Because when Jesus is in the house, everything changes. You know, if you think you're in a place where maybe you've messed it up too hard, I would just tell you this. Take some advice from Zacchaeus. Do not let anything stand in your way of coming. And if you hear him telling you to come down from whatever proverbial tree you've climbed, that requires an answer. You need to climb down. You need to do it now. But when you do, you know, realize that that's Jesus wanting to come to where you are. He wants to come hang out in your dwelling place. He wants to come to your house. Let him. Because there's nothing you can do where he can't see you. There's nowhere you can go where Jesus won't notice you. There's nowhere you can go that is so far away that Jesus gets distracted and doesn't care about you anymore. I mean, if he can spot our short little outcast tax collecting dude up in a sycamore tree over everyone else's head, he knows exactly where you are. Run to him. Climb trees. Do whatever you have to do. But don't miss him. And then what you'll find is that it's he who has seen you the entire time. And if you're trying to hold on to things you had before you met him, take a lesson from Zacchaeus and let that stuff go. Because who you are before you met him doesn't matter. What matters is that you meet him and that you go on after that. So I would just say this. If you need him, and I don't know if this is for somebody in the room, I don't know if this is for somebody online. If you're joining, if you're worshiping with us online, hi. We're glad you're here. This is for you too. If you need him today, when Jesus is passing through your Jericho, you're in the tree, then let those walls come tumbling down in an entirely new way. And let him pierce the fruit of your heart. Because then you can see what things are like with him rather than without him. Run to him and salvation will come, but don't miss it. Amen?
I'm going to play for just a minute. If you have anything you need to come to the altar for, whether that's a salvation thing or whether that's a burden or whether whatever it is, know that Jesus already sees what that is. He already sees you in whatever tree it is that you're in, trying to make sure you know who he is. He already knows where you are. He already knows what burdens you carry. Come and lay them here. Because he's here ready to, to come to your house. is good. Oh. Even when the sound system yells at me all the time. Oh, <laughs> well, we are going to get ready to uh, close the service. As I do, I'm going to, because um, I was going to do this earlier and there just wasn't a, there wasn't a way to get it in the pastoral prayer. Um, this is a pretty amazing amount of stuff, by the way, that has been donated for on Sunday. This is really cool. Um, and I know they mentioned it earlier, but just know when this goes down to heart and hand, this does not go out on the sales floor in the thrift store. Those donations come in on other days from other people, but anything that comes in from Monday, Sunday from the churches goes into their collection that they give out to folks who come who are in need, who cannot afford to buy clothing or who are getting on their feet after a disaster or any number of things. So this is giveaway for them. This is a, a provision for folks who are in need. So this is an amazing thing. First of all, thank you for all your donations. But we want to bless these items and pray for the people who will receive them. So I'm going to I'm gonna bless the undies. <laughs> this is the sins you never imagined saying when you start pastoring a church. I'm going to bless the underwear today. So. Um, but I'll do that, and then uh, okay, this, is the, this is the other half of the sentence. We're going to bless the underwear and then bless you guys. What an amazing sentence that is. But I'm going to do that. We're going to bless this and pray for the folks who, who are going to receive it. And then I'll send you out with the benedictions. Let us close. Lord, it has been a good place to be today. 
And Lord, we are thankful that no matter where we are, no matter how undignified we might have to get to get up the tree to see you, you already know where we are. And Lord, that all you want is to be with us. You want to come to our place. You want to come to our house. You want to dwell within us and change our lives. Lord, we pray that we would always keep that encouragement with us, that, that those things would never be far from our minds as to how much you love us, no matter who or where we are. And Lord, as we prepare to close the service, I, I would pray that you would bless these donations, that you would bless the underwear and the shirts and whatever else may be in here. Lord, I haven't looked at them all, but we know that there are a lot of things here that are going to help a lot of people. And so Lord, we pray that you would bless those things. And we also pray that you would bless the ones who will receive it. Lord, a lot of times those are going to be people who are in really tough places, who are having really difficult times, and they need a touch of love and care. And so, Lord, for everyone who receives one of these donations, we pray that you would remind them of your love and your care, and that, there, that this would be a blessing to them. Lord, bless the ministry of heart and hand and all that they do as well. We bring the souls for that day. And as we go from here, receive this benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds and the knowledge and the love of God the Father and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain in you now and always. Amen. Don't forget to check your mailbox for the newsletters. New ones are over here. Also, if you wrote something last year and gave it to me, I have that. So regarding Saints, All Saints Day. If you didn't if you didn't catch that, if you wrote something last year for All Saints Day and you'd like to just use that, Loretta has last year's, so just let her know. <laughs>